Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Joyce, Joyce All-Knowing Tarot, and I'm back with another reading. Wanted to look at a couple of cases. We've got Derek Chauvin's case, the one who murdered the police officer, former police officer who murdered Derek, um, I mean, George Floyd. And um, Gillian Maxwell, um, I guess they've got another charge for her. There is a number four girl, they're calling her minor, I think minor child four, where she was introduced through Maxwell to Epstein and she was paid hundreds of dollars in order to do particular acts. We're all grown-ups here. We know that there was a sexual encounter with these individuals. So I want to see how things are looking for those two individuals and we'll get started in just a minute. Everyone is having a wonderful day or had a wonderful day. Um, I did. I had a busy day. Oh, I got up early this morning and worked out and oh, cleaned my house, cooked dinner, went to the store, just a lot of stuff. And I'm going to tell you, it was from that energy healing class because I didn't just teach the class. I participated in the class as well because I was blessed to have different presenters. And man, not only did I feel great, but so many students wrote me to tell me how they felt so better and things changed. And one of my students is even going to go to the Appalachian Mountains and do some hiking. She felt so good. So that is fantastic. Now, remember, if you didn't hear me uh, yesterday, I am going to start the numerology class again. So if you saw my interview with Oracle of Whimsy, um, go check it out. It was from last week, Wednesday. And it was her birthday. And she asked me, would I do numerology for her? And I was kind of taken aback, but I'm like, okay. And um, yeah, and she was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. And we got off the camera. She was even happier. And then I guess she talked to me about me with Sheila the day or two after or something like that. And just loved the reading. And you can do it too. It's something that anyone can really learn and when you really start getting into it and you see the concepts that numbers never change a one is always going to be a one is a one one plus one is always going to equal two and that's the thing i love about it i can do a tarot reading for you today but if you do something different and leave off that trajectory then that reading is going to change or i can say well i'm a scorpio and that means nothing because that's my sun sign. What about your all your other planets, your nodes, your Chiron, your Lilith, you know, all these other things that make up who you are. But with numbers, it's right there. It's plain. It's simple. It's crisp. It's clean. I have you looking at your destiny, your fate, the challenges you have and will continue to face in your life, um, what your life path is what your personal years are. I think we'll even throw in some angel numbers this time. So don't forget, if you're interested in that, I put it in the community board up above, up there, and my email is in the description. So go ahead and email me. Put the word yes in the body of your email, and we will get back with you on an information sheet. Oh, and it'll be on Sundays. It'll start April 18th, and we'll go to May uh, 23rd. It's one hour. And I'm going to also do an optional Saturday if you need additional tutoring or information. And because I'm so pleasing to be around, you might want to come on that extra Saturday just to hang out with me. Okay, so let's get to work here. Um, I'm going to use the Urban Tarot. I really, I really love, I like Tarot decks, period. I have a number of them. And of course, you know, Rider weight is the best deck to start with. That way, any of the other um, decks that are based on Rider weight, you can understand those better. But you have to get the basics first. But this is um, the uh, Alistair Crowley's deck. And I absolutely love this deck. Um, he was a Mason and so was uh, Rider. I think weight was too. They were Masons and, and everything. So this is a fascinating deck to use. A little bit... Uh, more intense energy, I guess I would say. So give me a moment to invoke my cards. Let's 
So let's look at how Derek Chauvin, now you remember Derek Chauvin was the police officer who once had apprehended George Floyd. I think George Floyd had, did he have a bad check? Bad check. I think that was what it was. Well, you guys will tell me. Um, and he came to arrest him. The check was very, very a small amount. It's, it's in the misdemeanor category. It was so small. But um, he ended up kneeling on George's neck for eight minutes and some change and virtually killed him right there in front of a group of people and someone was filming the whole thing. So uh, it turned Minnesota and a lot of places in a complete turmoil. So that was really crazy. But let's look at the process of Derek Chauvin's trial. Um, I think they're just starting today and they're doing a lot of back and forth um, with the prosecution and defense. It seems like more arguing amongst themselves. What's happening in Derek Chauvin's? What's happening with Derek Chauvin's trial? What? What's happening with Derek Chauvin's trial? And well, the first thing we have is prudence. And this is like the Eight of Pentacles in the weight deck, Rider weight deck. I'll try to tell you, you know, how they line up. But in this case, they're working on the case. They're going through every aspect of information they have on, on the case, every piece of video that they have. The defense is going through everything with a fine tooth comb. Let me get over a little bit, get in the middle of the camera. Um, yeah, so they're really going over judges reading over material. So right now, everyone is really doing their homework because they know that the wrong decision on this could really upset that uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis area and probably a lot of other areas across the country, the way people turned out for that. So there's a lot of power struggle, too. There's power struggles in terms of can we use this evidence, can we use that evidence, can we use this eyewitness, that eyewitness. Oh, and then we have the devil. And I would say that um, this is probably more representing Derek than anyone else. Um, Derek almost has this kind of feeling like I'm not really so worried about it. I'm doing my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I was trained to do. He's, you know, how? have you ever known anyone who can tell a lie? Or have you ever done that? You could tell a lie so much that you believe that it's the truth when it really wasn't. He's like that. He's very much, um, I think he's, he's, he had struggled with uh, addiction is, issues. He was very much about trying to be on top of or in control of people, situations, very oppressive to uh, probably people of color, females anyone impoverished very much so like he looked down his nose at them he felt he was better than them he feels like he's done he i did my job you're supposed i tell you what to do you're supposed to do what i tell you to do and you, you almost like i'm the boss of you like that i'm the boss of you you do what i say do and that's that he almost has a kind of unbothered energy about it that says uh hey what's the problem you know he was struggling he was resisting arrest but the, the um, videos of him coming out of the car with his brother on the driver's side doesn't show that. Doesn't look good for, for him right now. He's got the Five of Swords. In this case, the Five of Swords says defeat. But I, I think that's probably so. But at the same time, his arrogance is going to be a big defeat for him. That's the word I'm looking for. He's got an arrogant attitude. Um... You know, it's one thing to be a person that's in an authority figure position and carry it with pride and honor and dignity. And that was not him at all. Um, he has been very deceitful, whether it was talking to his attorneys or anybody else. He's been very deceitful and telling half truths, especially as it comes to dealing with people of of color. I'm going to say that, that he has a, um, he's very deceptive or attempted to be deceptive. Like, I don't care about that. I don't even think about that. But that is absolutely not true. He's very deceitful. He's very cunning. And he's going to try to use his swift mind to try to get out of it, you know, like think his way out of it. But I don't think that is going to be possible because not only is that five of swords, but that's also defeat. 
Yeah, and then we have the Princess of Wands. So this is um, like the Page of Wands. So we'll be hearing a lot of information about what is going on. There'll be a lot of news coming out. And I don't think it's going to be really good news for him. I think that they're going to uncover parts of him that we didn't know existed. I mean, they, they have done their serious homework on him. And it's going to be presented. So we're going to find more information about him than we thought. Uh, we've got the um, the Aeon. Uh, and this is like judgment in reverse. Judgment in reverse says that I'm, a, I, I don't, I'm not trying to change. I'm not going to do anything different. Uh, this is not something I'm going to learn from. I'm not going to take responsibility. That is what it is. I'm not going to take responsibility. I'm do, I was doing my job. And he's going to stick by that. I'm doing my job. I'm not taking responsibility. Um, yeah, he's not going to have learned anything. Uh, he is going to leave a legacy, but it's going to be a legacy that is really going to be a negative legacy for him. So right now, that's where we are with it. It's too early. Oh, goodness. It is no good for him. He's got the three of swords in reverse. This is sorrow. Um, in upright, it's like, yes, I feel sorrow. Or yes, my heart was broken. Or yes, you know. Something didn't go the way I wanted to, but I've learned. I'm learning from this. I'm releasing this. I'm getting over this. This is the sorrow in reverse that says that, wow, he's going to really catch it. He's going to really, from that arrogant energy that he's putting out, that not taking responsibility energy, he's putting out, it's going to really boomerang back on him. One, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what they're going to do, um, at least it looks like at this point, I've got the Princess of Cups, which is like the Page of Cups, is perhaps offer him something, offer him a deal, something where um, perhaps he's not going to do as much time as we think he should do, you know, because we're all playing detective and lawyers and FBI agents and everything else. But uh, I think it's going to be like that, like if... If things go the way they are, they would come to him privately with some type of deal. He'd have to serve some amount of time for the situation. I don't see him at the way these cards look right now. I don't see him walking away uh, with uh, no charges. So it would have to be uh, some type of super duper surprised witness that would come through the door that could save him at this point. Okay, let's take a look at... Max, uh, Gaylene, Gaylene Maxwell. What's going on with her? Now she's got a fourth charge. And I, you know what? This is amazing to me. And maybe it's her position or her father's position or, or whatever, but you only have four people, girl, by, no, four young girls that you brought into uh, Epstein's clutches. And then what type of woman would say, okay, you, you know, we'll get this girl and we get this girl. Something is wrong with you. And, and it's a feeling of she did this to, to be him, to keep him, to hold on to him. Listen, if I got to do all that to keep a man, I'm gone. You know, I, I'm out anyways. You no. Know, show me what's going on with Jeline Maxwell. Let me see. Jeline Maxwell. No jumper. One more. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that she's trying to do or trying to argue the case, she gets a seven of swords, which is, it's all futile. It's not going to, it's, it, there's nothing she can do. She's really out of steam. That's futility. Like, it's done. It's it. We got you. It's just another brick on the block for you. Interesting. She got. She's going to get an offer too. Yeah, she is going to get an offer. The thing about her though is she's got the death card, so she's going to make some kind of change or transformation. I don't see her confessing per se, but she's going to make some type of a change or some type of a transformation. I think that she is going to also be presented. She got the Princess of Cups too. You saw me shuffle. So that speaks of an offer. They're going to offer something. And to me, when offers come, those are like plea bargain type things. You know what I mean? Where they uh, reduce the your sentence.
to well, maybe minimal um, so they can get you on something and that's going to cause her to have a big change yeah for sure and yeah she's got the art card so that's like temperance so she's going to be in there for a while let me just say that she's going to stay in prison in a while and while she's in prison she's going to get or locked up her voice she's going to be in custody and uh it's going to make a change in her you know like uh like a uh, coming to Jesus moment that, yes, I did this and I was with this one. Like, stop denying it. It's all out here now. It can't be hidden. And so, you know, after a while, when you're done with all the lying and denying, it all becomes futile. And she makes a transformation and is willing to give them information, whether it's taped. It's some information that they want from her. It's what they want. And she's going to make a transformation and she's going to do that because she's got she's going to start feeling like uh, I need to do something to right the wrong, you know, to get the balance back, to work the scales out again. And so that's what she is going to do. So we're going to watch that unfold with her. Um, yeah, I don't see her. Um, yeah, that. Oh, my goodness. OK, sorry, guys. I just got it. <laughs> she is going to make some transformation. She is going to. No, realize the time that she may have to be put away and she's willing to make a deal and she's going to tell on the Knight of Cups. She's going to spill whatever to your information. That's the seducer in the Toth deck. So she's going to spill tea on any information that she has on Epstein or actually this almost looks like uh, Prince Andrew. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it, but. It almost reminds me of him and not the curly hair so much, but just just the face, the dark hair, the fair complexion. So she's going to be spilling tea. And actually, we have the seducer. It's an older guy talking to a younger lady. So she's going to be spilling tea. Wait for that, because she's that if she gets a plea offer, she's going to get a plea deal only if she agrees to change herself, change her mind. Get your head and your mind right in the game and tell the tale. So, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, I would expect that. I don't know how many people want to go to prison at the end of the day, but you did what you did. You said what you said, and that is that. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to thumbs up. That always helps our, it's our algorithm that I'm talking about that gets us up so we can be seen on, you know, like people's recommendations and things like that. Get our faces out there more. Um, so make sure that you thumbs up. It's free. Just a quick thumbs up. And um, yeah, comment, subscribe. Always oh, subscribe. You come and watch me anyways. You might as well subscribe. You must like me because I like you. Anyways, you guys have a blessed day. Bye now.